What we have here is an assisted living that came in as a complaint as a boarding home from Adult Protective Services. What is uh, unique about this is the Sheriff's Department went out this morning to investigate that complaint uh, due to them staying on top of it, saying we're not going to give up. Once they got out there, found that the location was empty. Uh, due to their work, they found this location and at 2.30 this afternoon uh, was able to come out here, made contact with these partner agencies. Uh, what we have is about 16 residents at this location. Three of them are non-ambulatory, which means they cannot move, take care of themselves, showers, restrooms, give them self-medication. So um, what's happening is they've got family members coming out to get the ones they can. Otherwise, Cetrac uh, is working with ESD 11 to get these transported to either assisted living locations that are licensed or to the hospital if needed. Um, I think that uh, there may be some comments that uh, the Sheriff's Department wants to make, so I want to make sure um, you know, we let them speak. I do want to say this is a very fluid uh, scene. We're still gathering a lot of information, uh, but the key here is this. This is some of the most vulnerable of our population. These are people that cannot take care of themselves and need others. And there was no fire alarm, no sprinkler system, no smoke detectors. They couldn't have gotten out if there was an emergency. And we all know, unfortunately, we know about the fatalities that happened today in Pennsylvania, 13 lives lost. And that's why we're all out here working together to save lives before they need to be saved. And uh, I want to let the Sheriff's Department say what they need to say. And uh, if there's questions, we may be able to answer a few. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Sergeant Chudy with Harris County Sheriff's Office. And uh, I'm over the boarding home detail. And uh, I'd like to thank Chief Christensen, Adult Protective Services, Set Track, and uh, all of our other partnerships that were able to come out and uh, help resolve the, today's issue. Uh, so basically, initially, like Chief said, there was an APS complaint um, that the Sheriff's Office followed up on and the Fire Marshal's Office followed up on. Investigators from the Fire Marshal's Office and uh, the boarding home detail with the Sheriff's Office went out looking for um, the, uh, the residents that reported the, uh, the possible uh, abuse or neglect in that, in that boarding home. They were not able to discover anyone in the first house. They went and checked a couple few more houses with their uh, diligence and hard work they were able to find this location and come in and see what the issues were there's a bunch of fire life and safety issues uh, like the chief just mentioned earlier and our goal is uh, to come in and if you're not licensed not permitted and you're operating under the radar um, we're coming in to enforce the law and if you come in you violate these laws you're going to get dealt with and that's going to be civil or criminal charges or face shutdown of your business or operation so um, that's what the sheriff's office is here for. That's what the boarding home detail and the sheriff's office uh, and the fire marshal's office uh, work together with doing. Uh, APS is instrumental in assisting us at getting uh, these residents placed in the pl proper care facilities that they need. Um, like the chief said, some of the residents were um, non-ambulatory, which means uh, they have mobility issues, uh, issues with taking care of themselves. Um, so they need special or personalized care treatment. Um, so we're out here, we're getting, uh, it's ongoing investigation and we're helping getting these residents placed to the proper places that they need to, that are licensed, that are up to code and up to permit. Um, I don't know if APS wants to say anything, no? Uh, do you guys have any questions? What do we know about the company that's running this? Um, it, it appears to be a mom and pop. Uh, it started out as a boarding home or two boarding homes that um, basically they were collecting money from the residents and not paying the rent and the mortgage or lease company decided to evict them so went out to these locations they were already gone uh, we were able to track down through uh, detective Lauer was able to track down and, and find this location through the various uh, investigative methods and we found this location and came did a knock and talk and discovered you know no one here was licensed or permitted not even health care providers so that, that's an issue for us. So there were no health care providers inside? There was health care providers inside, but they weren't licensed or permitted. Okay, so there were like 16 adults here? Correct. Were there like an adequate number of people to uh, assist them? So 
that part, um, the biggest thing was, is there was more people per bedroom than is what's allowed by the regulations. So the boarding home regulations, it's 60 square feet per a person per bedroom. There was like three or four people per bedroom in a 120 square foot bedroom. And that's not enough space. And, um, and, and, and I also want to say, this is where us working together, some of these should be in an assisted living, which is, is a very unique situation for us because we normally work together on the boarding homes. Knowing that some of these should have been in assisted living, it's hard for us to answer that question, how many licensed healthcare workers could there have been? Because then that goes into state regulations, but that's part of the investigation we'll be working. Do you have a kind of age range for the people that are living here? Um, it's mostly elderly people, um, eight, 65 and older, most of them 65 or older, um, different uh, disabilities, different illnesses, uh, different needs, things like that. So I understand there was some shuffling of people before you located them here. Is it that they were tipped off that you all were looking or? I think it was more the fact that they were going to be evicted because they weren't paying the rent, but they were taking the residents' money. Now, were the families able to contact them? Yes, yeah, so we have APS on site uh, contacting family members as best we can. Um, and if we can release them to the family, we'll release them to the family if the family can take care of them until they can find uh, a su you know, suitable living conditions. That's what we're going to try to shoot for. If they can't, then they're going to be placed in other assisted living uh, facilities or other boarding homes or what have you. If they need medical care or treatment, they might have to go to the hospital. So um, it, it's just depending on whatever their needs are. Is it too early to talk about the charges that this mom and pops are going to face? It's too early right now. It's, it's still ongoing, still early. Um, we have to go back and look at certain times when we contacted the, uh, the previous owner in the past and gave them notice, um, things like that. So if you're operating a boarding home without a permit, you can class, you face a class B misdemeanor, uh, fines $1,000 a day per violation. Um, so there, and, there and are criminal charges, yeah, and possibly. Since, and again, this is unique because uh, based on some of the things that we're finding here, and that's part of the fluid investigation, um, there's also assisted living issues going on. So there's additional charges. We have, the fire marshal's office has issued a stop work order, uh, which means immediately this place is shut down, which is why uh, we're staying here tonight until all of these residents are in a safe location.